Traveling on and off for the last five years, one could say that I've been on a lot of planes and through a lot of airports. So, I decided to give you guys and gals my best airplane and airport tricks, tips, and hacks. Always check in online. Guys, there are three huge reasons why you should do this. First things first is if you are on a long haul flight, older planes don't have plugs. Some airlines let you know what seats have plugs in it. Plugs are important, so you can choose the seats that have the plugs. The best rule of thumb is to pick a seat at the very front of the plane because those generally will have a higher chance of having a plug. Also, if you have a tight connection, choosing a seat as close as you can to the front, make sure that you get off the plane first, which can add five to 10 minutes if you are in the, as opposed to if you were in the back of the plane. This is a huge difference if you are in that position where you are running for your flight. Plus, sometimes airline carriers overbook seats. <laughs> North American airline carriers. Which means that even though you paid for your flight already, doesn't necessarily guarantee that you have a seat on your flight. Yes, so by checking it online, you kind of get first dibs at seats. Now if you are like me and you like to get your food first when you board a plane, order a special meal. These are of course dietary requirement specific meals, meaning that you will be giving up a certain food group like meat or dairy or it might be kosher or low fat. But the benefit is that you get your food first. So if you can live without a certain food group, you get your food first. And in a huge plane, this can be the difference of like 15 to 30 minutes. You can also pack snacks. However, if you are packing things like fruits or nuts, make sure you eat it before you deboard your plane and go through customs in whatever foreign country you're in because sometimes they have restrictions on certain foods coming in. Don't buy a black bag. Seriously, don't buy a black bag. Now I've had my luggage lost a few times now and the first thing they ask you when you lose your luggage is to identify what your bag looks like. If you tell them it's a black bag, well, good luck. Because that's them trying to identify your bag in a big pile of bags. If yours is the black bag, it is gonna be way harder to find than if it's something that really stands out. Also, make sure you snap a photo of your luggage before you board. This helps a lot with identifying what your bag looks like. Four-wheeled suitcases are always better than two-wheeled suitcases. Trust me, pushing your suitcase is gonna be a lot easier than pulling a two-wheeled suitcase. Bring an empty water bottle. You can take it through security and then once you're past security, you can fill it up at any of the free water fountains they have and voila, you have liquid that's not ridiculously overpriced at an airport. Dress in layers. Now airports have a Katy Perry problem, AKA they're hot when you are going through the airport and when you first get on a plane, and then they are freezing cold once you are on the plane. It is best to dress in layers so you can take clothes off, you can take clothes on, depending on what temperature you want to be with. I personally love wearing some sort of hooded contraption, like a hoodie, you might call it, or something that I can put over my head. When your plane gets canceled or something goes wrong, the number one tip I can give you is don't get mad. It's sad. If you are yelling at airport staff, that's just in any situation really, that's not gonna wanna make them wanna help you. I mean, I completely understand the situation. I've been, I've been there. I've been frustrated, I've been tired, I've been pissed off, but yelling at other people does not get you anywhere at the airport. They're just gonna go, sorry, nothing I can do. Whereas, if you try to make them sympathize with you, if there are a lot of other people having a horrible situation and a lot of other flights being canceled, you know, they're probably gonna look a little bit more favorably in your case. This has personally led to me getting free flights rerouted. It's led to me not paying excess baggage fees. It's led to me getting a preferred choice of hotel and extra meal vouchers, even when I didn't even need a meal voucher, just by being nice and patient and also crying, I mean crying. Kind of. If you can do it, you're gonna pull off the crying, put off the tears. I've done it before, seriously. Crying people, you know, 
Also, for more complex issues, it's all about who you talk to at an airport. Front counter check-in staff can only do so much, but there are customer service peoples, and there are office peoples, there are a lot of different people that work for an airline that can help solve your situation on various levels. You know what I'm saying? They can make things happen. The higher the person in charge, the better your chances. Also, if you are currently waiting in line, like a big huge line because like everyone else's plane's been canceled, try calling in the airline. Even if you're in line, try calling in the airline because sometimes that can be a lot quicker than waiting in the line to talk to a service rep. Get lounge access. Now, this can be a whole video in and of itself on different airline alliances and how to get uh, frequent flyer miles. But basically, the gist of it is, once you get to certain levels, you get lounge access. And it's wonderful. Basically, lounge access is free Wi-Fi, it's comfortable seats, and it's snacks. Pretty good deal if you're gonna be in an airport for several hours in a layover. You know, lounge access, it's quite nice. If you don't have a frequent flyer miles, and you cannot actually get lounge access, try and see if you can pay for lounge access. That's right, certain lounges allow you to pay a fee to access the lounge. It's usually like $25 to $50. Now, of course, you have to determine if it's actually worth the lounge. I would say, unless you have a layover of at least an hour and a half to two hours or more, then it might be worth it to pay for the lounge access. If it's anything less than that, then you could probably find something else to do with your time and save yourself the $30 to $50. Also, if your airport doesn't have free Wi-Fi, you can always sit outside of a lounge and kind of, you know, cipher off their free Wi-Fi. Yeah, Nadine's recommendations. You never need to be at the airport three hours before your flight, unless you are flying like on a super busy holiday at the biggest airports on the middle of the day. You really do not need to be at the airport three hours before. Two hours is usually fine for international or domestic flights. 2.5 if you are at a busier airport and you need to go through customs as well as security because security doesn't take as long as if you have to go through customs and security. But really, two hours is what I usually do and I'm always fine with that, so. If you are running late for a flight, i.e. your flight is already boarding or is about to board, tell somebody, tell somebody. If you are waiting in line for security, let one of the, the control, I don't know what they call, but like one of the guards that are there know that your flight is boarding or is about to board because they can put you through magical priority lines that get you through security like that. If you have a flight that is boarding or is about to board, like really tight schedules. So just ask them. Also, don't forget to ask your fellow travelers. If you are already in line, ask the people in front of you, hey, look, explain to them the situation. My plane is about to board or it's currently boarding at the moment. Could I please just go ahead of you in the security lines? Now this is kind of like a mixed grab bag because obviously it depends on who it is that you're asking, but people have let me through before. I've seen this happen many times before. Unless those people themselves are late for a flight, they'll generally just let you through because if they're not in a hurry, then it doesn't really matter to them. Don't be afraid to ask airline staff directions if you are lost. What's the quickest way to get places? I have done this many times before. I've asked them what's a good place to eat or how do I get to this terminal or how do I get to this? People want to help you. Don't be afraid to ask. Like I've been told crazy shortcuts through some of the busiest airports to go through like parking lots and these weird alleys. It sounds sketchy, but it got me to my gate a lot faster than I thought if I just followed signs and did the normal way. So yeah, that's it. If I happen to miss anything else that you guys and gals have discovered on your travels, please let me know down below in the comments. And yeah, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more tips and tricks. And uh, happy flying. Bye.